announce the arrival of Pan American Chartered Aircraft Clipper Chrysler. Arrival is at gate 37. On August 25th, 1963, a Chrysler turbine car left Detroit for Geneva, Switzerland. It was the first time a Chrysler turbine automobile ever left the United States. From Geneva headquarters of Chrysler International SA, it began a world tour that lasted for four months and included 24 cities in 21 countries on five continents. From London to Mexico City, the turbine flew on its own chartered Pan American DC-7C. This was the longest single chartered flight ever made. The object of the tour was to introduce to the world a remarkable new means of automotive power, a striking example of Chrysler's engineering leadership. Several mechanics, turbine specialists, were sent from Detroit on the world tour with the car. One of these was Demetrius Cronus, whose father, Demos, a Greek-American, has been a Chrysler employee for 35 years. Demetrius was himself born in Salonika and was brought by his father to the United States as an infant shortly after his mother's death. It's so good to have you back. Which was the most exciting place you visited? That was easy. Without any question, Paris. <laughs> I'll never forget my first look at Eiffel Tower. I couldn't believe I was really in Paris, and yet, there it was, in front of me and my turban, the Arch of Triumph. Wherever we drove, things were different, yet the same. I thought traffic was bad in Detroit, foul. <laughs> Paris tops them all. Main Street in Paris leads to the Paris Auto Show, the biggest in the world. From the President of France to the French taxi drivers, they were all hooked on our turban. I thought I'd be disappointed when we got to the smaller cities of Europe. Things were sure quieter. But it was a nice change. Sometimes I couldn't believe it was really me in Europe. And with this automobile, I had in my hands the steering wheel of the world's most exciting car. It seemed like the whole world was at my feet. Even the police were friendly and curious, like everyone else. We took off, they stood and watched. Geneva, Switzerland, European home of the United Nations, is also headquarters of Chrysler International. Like they told us in the beginning, we were out to sell an idea. We wanted to show them what Chrysler engineering can do. And we did show them how easy it was to drive the car. All throughout Europe, people's reactions were fantastic. They couldn't believe what they saw or what they heard. Every bridge and highway seemed to lead to a more interesting place. Every corner we turned led to places where more people were waiting to see it, touch it. Listen to a car which will run on any fuel. It'll burn and go through a pipe.
They had to smell it to believe that there were no fumes like an ordinary car. Top newspaper reporters, especially the ones who write for automobile magazines, told us this was the first really new development in automobile transportation since the gasoline engine was built. In Geneva, reporters and VIPs had a chance to look at the turbine. Everybody was surprised when we told them it has less than one-fifth as many moving parts. One spark plug. Hank Ketchum, the guy who draws Dennis the Menace, was there too. We crossed the English Channel and drove to London. The hardest thing about driving in England was getting used to driving on the wrong side of the road. At first, I thought I'd pile it up. Wouldn't that have been awful? But after a while, it was easy. We saw the horse guards in the Queen's Palace. I always wanted to see London, but I thought I'd never make it. The turban ran like a dream. It's great to be there. I'll always be glad for the opportunity. But once in a while, there were times when I'll have to admit I look forward to getting home. Even after a tour of five continents. The day after we arrived in town, sometimes the same day, we would be in the newspapers. We were the biggest news no matter where we happened to go. Here, let me show you. No matter what was going on in the rest of the world, we were the biggest news wherever we happened to be. French papers, German, Turkish, <laughs> Japanese. They always had a picture of the turban. And that looked the same in Chinese and in English. Here, they even took pictures of us mechanics. Were uh, all of the turbans were painted the same color? Sure. I guess the idea was to give it a distinctive color because it's a very unusual car. Bet you really go. We not only saw the world on this trip, but we saw an awful lot of big shots. Real important people like Prince Bertel of Sweden. Princes, premiers, and presidents were impressed with our car. The prince is quite a driver himself, and he wanted to drive the car. He really enjoyed the turban. Mr. Chiari, president of Panama, wanted to see under the hood. So we put a glass of water on the engine while it was running to show him the engine didn't vibrate any. In Geneva, Switzerland, the young Aga Khan came to see the car. The questions he asked showed us he knew a lot about automobiles. I guess he liked the turbine too. We took the car to the house of Mr. Macapagal. He's the president of the Philippines. He was taking a siesta when we arrived, but he got up to see the turbine. Seeing it wasn't enough, he asked us if he could have a ride. My buddy Charlie happened to be driving the car at the time. Was he nervous when he took off with the Philippine president sitting next to him? The premier of South Australia, Sir Thomas Playford, also asked to have the hood lifted. Sir Thomas wanted to know when we would be making them in Australia. I couldn't answer that. I wish you could have seen all the sights I saw in just those few months. Beautiful streets and parks. Some of the oldest cathedrals in the world. One of the other mechanics had a chance to ride in the helicopter. He 
had a game of funny feeling hanging up there in the sky looking down on the turban. I was driving it that day. I looked forward to Australia and I wasn't disappointed. It's a young, growing country. A great golden crown stands over the beautiful city of Stockholm. The people call this city the Venice of the North because of all the rivers and canals. It's clean and really beautiful. Sometimes I wonder why we didn't get lost. It seems like everywhere we went, the road signs were in a different language. We'd fly from wet, cold climates to the tropics. It wasn't always easy to get used to the change of weather. In Puerto Rico, they've got men who shinny up coconut trees like you take a walk down the street. Look out below. While we're in the canal zone, I got to drive the car over to the Panama Canal. In Mexico, we got to see some great old Spanish churches and met a couple of great young Spanish girls. Even learned a few words of Spanish. We even landed on the Cocos Island to refuel during a long overwater hop. That Pan American crew really knew how to handle their plane. Even when it rained, people came out to watch the turbine. It seemed like going or coming, we couldn't miss for that time. Not only the people, but even the koala bears in Australia took a second look at that turbine. We entered Sydney, Australia, over the famous bridge which no one ever forgets. I suppose there are bigger bridges, but this one is the symbol of Sydney. Wellington was a lot quieter than Sydney. Then there was Tokyo, neon and noise. A fancy sign that Ginza puts Times Square in the shade. American sent along a couple of loading specialists who only had one job to do, but they did it often and they did it well. It was getting that car safely on and off the DC-7. There was exactly one inch clearance at the doorway. In Australia, where Chrysler has a lot of big plants, we showed the turbine to the workers. they ever interested. You should have seen them crowd around the car, Dad. They even cheered us. It made us all feel real good. And then, of course, there were the girls. Pretty girls. I got a different kind of thrill from the girls we saw on the trip. Found out you have to be very careful how you speak to a girl in the Far East. I can tell you one thing. There isn't a girl in the world, not in the whole wide world, that wouldn't go for a guy in a Chrysler turban. I just happen to know.
Naturally, every girl we met wanted a ride in the turbine. But the only ones who could were reporters. Then there was a strange, quiet girl high on the hill near Manila. She watched us pass. Wish I could have talked to her, at least knowing her name. Dad, you used to say that people in the old country weren't interested in automobiles and modern things. Maybe that was true 30 years ago, but it sure isn't true today. Everywhere we went, we found everybody interested in the turbine. They knew about Chrysler engineering, too. There just wasn't anybody that wasn't interested in the car. They talked to us about Chrysler engineering in Turkey, South Africa, Australia, and everywhere. The Japanese took the most pictures. They couldn't get over how the engine didn't vibrate any. And so it went one month, two months, three months. About then, frankly, I, I got pretty darn homesick. In South Africa, they wouldn't believe us when we said this car would run on cognac. So, we gave it a try. It worked, of course. Some people started out being skeptical. Some people just couldn't believe their eyes. But everybody was curious. No matter how often we saw it happen, and we saw it every day, the sight of all those people gawking at us around Chrysler Turbine gave me a thrill. It seemed to me we accomplished our purpose on the tour. We showed the world what Chrysler engineers can do. Demetrius, I'm glad you had the chance to see so much of the world. I never thought it's possible. I'm glad you got to see it when you are young. When you are young, you're at home wherever you are. Pop, you'd have been right at home in all the plants we visited. Some of them look like the Plymouth Assembly Line. <laughs> they got good craftsmen there. Do you remember when Chrysler decided to build the turbine body? Well, they contracted with the gear people in Italy. Those Italians built the turbine bodies by hand. Boy, were they artists. For us in the turbine lab, the engine was all hat by now. But we sure found it wasn't to the rest of the world. Again and again, they asked us to explain how it worked, why it was better. So we told them we've been working on the turbine for years and years. This wasn't the first model we made. Ours isn't the only turbine engine, but it's the best. We really licked the problem of high exhaust temperature. The turbine ran like a top. Our job was to keep it running. But being a Chrysler product, we didn't have much to do, except fine tuning. Still, we only had one car with us, and when we got to places like India and Singapore and New Zealand, we were a long way from home with another turbine. We met some great guys. A lot of them didn't speak much English, but you know how you can kind of sense a friendly feeling? And just watching how they handled their tools made you feel real good, too.
They've got very good production line people, too. South Africans, Mexicans, Australians, and others. Chrysler technicians trained just as well as we are. Their factories may look different than ours, but inside we met workmen who are just as sharp as anyone in Detroit. I began to feel we're all on the same team. Language is different, color of their skin sometimes, but they all work for Chrysler too. We saw knockdown Valiants coming off the ship at Rotterdam. And in London, long lines of British Dodge Q trucks. They looked different because they were designed and built in England. Man alive, Chrysler's building like crazy. In the Philippines, a brand new factory is going up. People of Turkey are proud of their country. When they put up a new building on the very highest spot, they run up the flag. The new plant near Istanbul is to build a different kind of truck which Chrysler International has developed. It makes it easy for countries that don't have a lot of big, fancy machinery to build the trucks themselves. It's rough and tough, too, and it's a beauty. Last up on the tour was Mexico City. Kinda hated to see it all end. I learned about Chrysler. I learned a lot about the world. I guess I even learned a little bit about myself. <laughs> know what I mean, Dad? <laughs> yes. Yes, Demetrius. Demetrius, the four months you were on your trip have been busy ones for me, too. I have been in charge of the early morning shift at the proving grounds. But we have been putting a brand new light utility truck through its paces. Chrysler International is building it in Europe. It's called the Farmobile. And it can carry its own weight in payload. The factory sent one of them to us at the proving grounds. And our test drivers are taking it over the courses to make sure it can stand up to the rocket conditions it will meet in many countries. The little truck has a tremendous suspension system. It can do about everything off or on the road. We saw them being used in Caracas, Australia and South Africa. It's a great little truck, but it can only travel on dry land. I've been thinking about places like Southeast Asia, where there are tremendous areas of marshland. What's this we've been hearing about the marsh screw amphibian? They tell me it can go in only a few inches of water, mud, muck, or silt. Maybe that's the answer for marshy tropical places. I wonder who dreamed up a rig like that. I'd like to see this mobile airport lounge with me. It carries passengers from the spot where they check in right out to the plane. People like your boss at the laboratory, those other engineers. They are working on something new all the time. You ought to see what they're doing over in the space division. Why, down in New Orleans now, they are building rockets that will take men to the moon, maybe. I've got a friend of mine working down there now. You know George Xerxes. 
He says that Saturn is 11 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty and two ices have it. It's for peace, you know, scientific. Demetrius, you drove the turbine around the world. How would you like to fly the Saturn to the moon? Well, somebody will get to go. We were on tour when we heard that Mr. Townsend had presented the Saturn to Dr. Werner von Braun of the Space Lab in New Orleans. All of us held our breath for the countdown. The Saturn is a major milestone in man's progress toward the conquest of space, as the gas turbine engine is a major milestone in the history of automotive engineering. Both are outstanding examples of the great promise of tomorrow by Chrysler. <laughs>